Hello, welcome back to another ink talk and another look at some inks. As usual, I've invested heavily into something that I enjoyed when I first uh, got a chance to try it out. So this was the first one of the Sailor inks that I got a chance to try. Notice how I had to put a translation on it so I knew what was in the bottle because I really can't tell from the outside uh, exactly what ink is in here and uh, I can't remember the Japanese names for these inks. All these gentle inks have a similar bottle which is a sailor bottle. They're also very f similar to bung box bottles. And again, you know, if I didn't know what was in this ink and I make certain I put it back in the right box, I wouldn't know what it is. The bottle has a big opening, but it has an insert inside, which evidently is like an ink well that you're supposed to blend over. And it doesn't work that well because it's not very deep. So if you have a big nib, it's very hard to fill. So I take them out and just fill from the bottle. The uh, color comes out really nice in the cap which is another thing that's nice about these inks. They are all very, very saturated, uh, which I think is uh, an attribute of Sailor inks or any of the inks related to Sailor, like Kobe or Bung Box. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, seven inks that uh, I have in my collection. I did the uh, usual... glass pen and as we zoom in here bear with me I think it's good to fill the frame with whatever it is that we're talking about and there we go so this uh, probably shows off the variations of uh, these inks much better than any of the other things that we could do um, as I mentioned I write with a glass pen then I lay down a patch and I give it a smear um, all of these inks are extremely super saturated, extremely lubricated. Every pen I put them in is written extremely well. Very easy to clean out. So on all, um, I think the inks are definitely worth uh, giving a try if you see a color that you like. I buy them on Amazon. Uh, they are relatively affordable. You can also buy them from uh, most of the um, pen suppliers. Uh, the ink is fairly well distributed, so that makes it nice to get a hold of. And obviously, if you go to any pen shows, I strongly recommend you um, give the ink a try. There's generally a lot of ink sampling uh, done at uh, pen shows. Now, as we're going to go over and uh, focus on the chromatography, uh, the intensity of the colors definitely comes out in the chromatography, and you can see I mean that's a really dark brown and that's an interesting combination of colors in the brown the um, aqua pheasant um, which is also called teal copper you can see kind of like the teal color in there there's some green in I mean it's a nice combination and I've enjoyed that ink and then there's sweet violet which is definitely in the violet family uh, as we go down to the next set We'll see the purple, the seaweed, which is the other ink I say I would very much enjoy uh, in a pen. Uh, as you can see from the chromatography, there's a lot of um, subtlety in these inks as well as intensity in these inks. Um, so that's kind of nice. And we go down to this one on the bottom, which is azure, a very nice blue. Uh, sky blue has also been referred to this color as so you'll find a lot of descriptions uh, from various people on what the inks are and you got to work out your own way of describing them and determining uh, how they are. Let's take a look at uh, how some pens write with these inks on uh, Toma River paper. This is a pen I did a review on, a restoration review. I've had this ink from the very beginning with um, Murai uh, ink. I think you'll notice right away that the intensity of the color is, is excellent. Uh, this nib doesn't have any flex or variety to it. So uh, you're not going to get that type of experience from uh, 
using this, but it's just a very deep, dark color. And I think that's one of the things that all the sailor inks have in common, at least all the ones that I have, is the color is very intense. It's in fact almost too intense. Uh, so you get, um, you know, darkness, but not a lot of color. As you can see, as you spread it out, you can see some of the green show up, but uh, it's certainly a dark color. Uh, works well in business, which is uh, where I've used it. Moving on to another color. So this is in my uh, Waterman 3 Franken pen, which has a nice uh, a Waterman number 2 uh, flexible nib in it. And this is so 10, which is the kind of like sky blue. Uh, again, very intense color. Uh, no mistaking what this color is. Flows well in this pen. Uh, the flow on this, because it's kind of a lubricated ink, at least it feels lubricated, it certainly just glides. Every pen I've ever put this in, they all glide across the paper. I mean, it's, no, you don't feel anything. So that's what makes it nice about putting this ink into a pen. And as you can see, it's definitely uh, intense. Moving on, here's my Duke 116, which has a ground nib in it. And this one has the purple, the dark purple. And again, it's a very dark, intense color. Uh, I've had it in this uh, pen since I inked it up. So for the past couple weeks, I've been using it, um, not necessarily daily, but I've been using it a lot. And again, this is like all the rest of them, the nib just glides across the paper. I just can't say enough about, from that perspective, this is uh, the best ink I've used as far as how it makes any pen seem to write better. This is my uh, Delta Unica, which has a medium steel nib in it, but it's a very broad, wet medium. And this has the brown ink. I think you can uh, agree that is a definitely a, a dark, broad line. The nib's a little bit soft, so that's nice. And as uh, we've seen before, a wet writer. So last in the uh, pens that we're going to use an example for is this Bexley uh, Prometheus, which I also did a review on. And this has also been inked with Sailor ink since I first uh, put the nib to paper. So this is the first ink that I liked. Again, very dark, very intense, and just so smooth. I mean, I, I, I can't keep raving about it. I just, every pen it, I use this with, it just, it just makes it feel so much nicer. So that's uh, how they look on Tomo River paper with uh, various nibs. Hopefully the uh, sunlight is bringing out some of the color, but they're so intense. The only one that really has that big difference to it is the Sotun, which is the sky blue. But they're all very nice colors. There's a lot of subtlety to them, and that's what makes them interesting and good to use. And the fact that they just write so well in every pen. It's always good to uh, take a look at how the inks react with water. Ink is not known for its water resistance, but we'll see how a couple drops affect the ink. Right away, it looks like um, this is not uh, water resistant, which is what we expected. But we'll let it set for a few minutes and see how they look. Well, let's dab off the water and see what's left. Ah, even though the water seemed to have pulled off a lot of ink, it uh, didn't remove all of it. So it seems to definitely be a little bit more water resistant than what I expected. 
So definitely readable underneath of the water. You know, uh, I wouldn't use it as a, you know, archival and indel indelible type of bulletproof ink, but uh, it holds its own. So hopefully you've enjoyed this look at some sailor inks. We're going to close on the little swatches, which of course I really like, and there's nice sunlight coming in, so it shows off the color well. So enjoy your writing experiences. Remember, changing the ink changes the pen. There's a lot of things that that'll do, like uh, changing the tires on your car, the strings in your tennis racket, you know, et cetera, et cetera, that uh, sometimes you can renew life or get new interest in something because you now experience it in a different way because you've now put a new ink into your pen that makes the pen seem much better. So many writing experiences, enjoy all of them. Till later, bye.